Hi, welcome back to the Bible Addict, and we will be going over chapter four in Esther today. So let's get started. <laughs> so um, last episode, we learned that um, Haman got the power. He set the date to kill every single Jew and him and the king are just kicking back, drinking wine. He's so happy with himself. So um, all the Jews found out, they're all confused. There's probably chaos, panic. So that's what happened in the last chapter. So now we are in chapter four and this is where Mor Mordecai requests Esther's help. So, all right, let's get started. Verse 1, when Mordecai learned about all that had been done, he tore his clothes, put on burlap and ashes, and went out into the city, crying with a loud, bitter wail. He went as far as the gate of the palace, for no one was allowed to enter the palace gate while wearing clothes of mourning. And as news of the king's decree reached all the provinces, there was great mourning among the Jews. I can't even imagine. Um, they fasted, wept, and wailed, and many people lay in burlap and ashes. So that's what they did in mourning back then. They ripped their clothes, they wore bur burlap, which is like, I mean, not that I wore it, but it's super itchy, right? Like I think of like, potato sack races like when you're little like at the park on the reunions or whatever and you're jumping in the potato sacks like they're like thick and itchy so they're really trying to be uncomfortable they're very like they're in mourning throwing ashes on themselves that's that's like great mourning right um when queen esther's maids and eunuchs came and told her about mordecai she was deeply distressed she sent clothing to him to replace the burlap, but she refused. Then Esther sent for um, Hathak, one of the king's eunuchs who had been appointed as her attendant. She ordered him to go to Mordecai and find out what was troubling him and why he was in mourning. So Hathak went out to Mordecai in the square in front of the palace gate. Mordecai told him the whole story, including the exact amount of money Haman had promised to pay into the royal treasury for the destruction of the Jews. Mordecai gave Hathak a copy of the decree issued in Susa that called for the death of all Jews. He asked Hathak to show it to Esther and explain the situation to her. He also asked Hathak to direct her to go to the king to beg for mercy and plead for her people. So now Mordecai is telling Esther, reveal yourself reveal that you are a Jew. So now he's telling her to reveal herself. So we'll see if she obeys. So Hathak returned to Esther with Mordecai's message. So I do want to read some of the commentary. These are verses uh, four to nine. When Esther learned of Mordecai's condition, she sent clothes for him to wear. Uninformed of the king's command, she didn't understand what was troubling her cousin. When Mordecai rejected the gift, Esther sent a messenger to him. Then Mordecai told him everything. He even gave the messenger a copy of the written decree that ordered the execution of the queen's people. Mordecai's command to Esther was clear. Approach the king, implore his favor, and plead with him personally, on behalf of our people. Previously, Mordecai had warned Esther to keep her ethnicity, uh, ethnic identity under wraps, possibly because of anti-Semitic atmosphere. But now he insisted that she go public. The time had come for God to use her for her ultimate purpose. Esther had been prove, prove it, I don't know that word, position to leverage influence for God's kingdom purposes and similarly known 
that however God blesses you, he does it so that you may be a blessing to others, which is really good. Okay, so now we are on verse 10. Then Esther told Hathak to go back and relay the message to Mordecai. All the king's officials and even the people in the provinces know that anyone who appears before the king in his inner court without being invited is doomed to die unless the king holds out his gold gold uh, scepter scepter <laughs> scepter and the king has not called for me to come to him for 30 days so hathak gave esther's message to mordecai mordecai sent this reply to esther don't you think for a moment that because you are in the palace you will escape when all the jews are killed if you keep quiet at a time like this, deliverance and relief for the Jews will arise from some other place, but you and your relatives will die. Who knows if perhaps you were made queen for just such a time as this. Ooh, Malachi was not playing. He was like, girl, you're going to die too. <laughs> um, I love it. You got to... You know, you sometimes have to say some harsh things. Um, and it's there was no lie in this. I mean, she she's Jew, so she was going to die too. So there's a, I mean, there is some of the, um, the study Bible for verses 13 and 14 uh, that I want to share. So for 13, this is what the study Bible says. Although Esther was the queen and shared some of the king's power and wealth, she still needed God's protection and wisdom. No one is secure in his or her own strength in any political system. It is foolish to believe that wealth or position can make us impervious to danger. Deliverance and safety come only from God. Dang, that was good. You can rewind it if you want to hear it again. <laughs> um, this is from the study Bible. After the decree to kill the Jews was given, Mordecai and Esther could have despaired, decided to save only themselves, or just waited for God's intervention. Instead, they saw that God had placed them in their positions for a purpose. So they seized the moment and acted. When it is within our reach to save others, we must do so. In a life-threatening situation, don't withdraw, behave selfishly, wallow in despair, or wait for God to fix everything. Instead, ask God for his direction and act. Sorry, there's an exclamation mark. God may have placed you where you are for just such a time as this. Should like, Put that on your wall somewhere, wherever you're at. Um, Stay-at-home moms homeschooling their kids, um, unemployed. So now you have, you know, free time because of COVID. Like, you could be unemployed. So what could you do with your time? So there's just for such a ju for <laughs> for just such a time as this, just plug that into your own life and see, and ask. God for his direction and then you act so let's oh oh I did read verse 14 so I'm going to read the study the study Bible for 14 God is not specifically mentioned in the book of Esther but it is obvious that Mordecai expected a divine deliverance while the book of Esther does not mention God by name or title his presence fills the pages Esther and Mordecai believed in God's care, and because they acted at the right time, God used them to save his people. When you face challenges in life, seek to know what God wants you to do, and then do it, confident that he will do his part. You don't know ahead of time how he will accomplish this, accomplish his will. Trust God and prepare to be surprised by the way he demonstrates his trustworthiness. And we're coming to the end of chapter 4, verse 15. 
Then Esther sent this reply to Mordecai. Go and gather together all the Jews of Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. My maids and I will do the same. And then, though it is against the law, I will go and see the king. If I must die, I must die. So Mordecai went away and did everything as Esther ordered him. And that's the end of chapter five, uh, four. <clears throat> And then I wanted to see what the commentary said at the end. Because I feel like that was a, it was kind of short, but it's really good to, um, to know um, what other perspectives were. So let me see, for verse 14, as if that wasn't bad enough, Esther would lose her opportunity to fulfill the purpose of which God had blessed her. If you keep silent at a time, silent at this time, relief and deliverance will come to the Jewish people from another place. Mordecai said, he knew God's word and character. The Lord had promised to bless all the peoples of the earth through Abraham's offspring so he would not permit his entire people to be wiped out. But if Esther refused to use her position for kingdom influence, God would still get the job done by some other means, even though Esther and her father's family would be destroyed. This is a reminder that we as Christians need to keep our theology straight. God is sovereign and will accomplish his program with or without us. He certainly desires to use you, yet no one is indispensable. If you refuse to obey him, he will still carry out his agenda through someone else. And you will have missed an opportunity to serve as um, his kingdom purposes. Perhaps you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. It was Mordecai's way of saying to Esther, don't you see that God has placed you in this situation at a time in history so that you can have a tremendous kingdom impact? Similarly, the church of Jesus Christ is called to accomplish kingdom purposes. If a local church is not winning the lost to Christ and disciplining them in faith so that they can have a heavenly influence on earth, it has failed in its calling. You have been called to God's kingdom for such a time as this. Whose agenda will you follow? Whose agenda will you follow? That's an ouch truth bomb. You need to figure out whose agenda you are going to follow. And the last commentary is for verses 15 to 17. To her credit, Esther didn't need to hear any more. She told Mordecai to gather all the Jews in Susa to fast for her for three days. She would do the same. Then she would go to the king, even though it was against the law. Esther knew that to do the right thing would require a risky step of faith. The human king had forbidden her to approach him uninvited, but her heavenly king had called her to a higher standard. Esther was resolved, if I perish, I will perish. And the Bible said, if I die, I will die. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were commanded to bow down before an idol. Daniel was told to pray to no one but a human king. Yet, these men too chose to trust God and take risk of faith. Whether you live to see another day was God's problem. So what risk of faith is, calling, is God calling you to make? Are you willing to obey God's word even when the outcome is uncertain? Even if it might cost you? Don't let the time you have, don't let the time you have been given pass you by. So I guess you need to ask yourself, those are really good questions. Whose agenda will you follow? God's kingdom agenda? Man's kingdom agenda? Political parties? Um, so you've got to answer that question for yourself. And then at what cost 
It could cost you your life. It can cost you your friends. It could cost you your job. But who are you here to please, God or man? So chapter four was pretty heavy and it's pretty short. There's not that much text to it, but it goes deep. And you can see God's hand in that one too. So I hope you enjoyed chapter four and we're gonna go right into chapter five. <laughs>